Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our SU27 and we're looking at the cockpit. Now this is a low fidelity model which means that not all of the controls and buttons and knobs and switches are modelled and interactive. Only about 20 to 30 percent are inter interactive, just the ones you absolutely need to fly. So we're just going to talk about them. Uh, we're going to scan roughly from left to right around the cockpit and go through everything that's interactive in one way or another. So first is the fly-by-wire button. In fact, no first is the throttle here. If I move the throttle stick or backwards or forwards, it moves back and tracks accordingly. Next, in front of the throttle lever, we have this one here with the big hazards sign on it, which says, do not press me. Under there, there is the button to take direct control of the aircraft, i.e. bypassing the fly-by-wire system. If you flip that up and press that, in fact, you do it by pressing the S, Sierra key as standard, that will turn off the fly-by-wire system, allow you direct control so you can do funky maneuvers like uh, Cobras and stuff like that. It is heavily recommended you do not do that because you will almost certainly lose control and crash the plane. Remember that the SU-27 is an incredibly unstable platform and as soon as you press that, basically, it's going to, well, be unstable and crash. Next, we have the autopilot buttons here. We've got eight buttons here. They represent the various modes of autopilot. You can't press them with the uh, with the mouse. Instead, you can press them with various keys. Uh, to know more about that, I've done a video about the autopilot in the Flanker, which is in the Flanker playlist in YouTube. Next, we've got this chap here. He is our gear lever. When it's in the up position, the gear is up. When it's in the down position, the gear is controlled to go down. You do that by pressing the G key. Next is the flight configuration panel. So we've got a series of lamps here. So when these ones are out, then the flaps are down. When these ones are out, then the FOD gates in front of the intakes are engaged. They are down, essentially. Here is the air brake lamp. Here is the gear lamp. When the gear are down and locked, we've got lights here. And this one is always a bit controversial, but as far as I understand it, it means that hydraulics are working, i.e. the gear are in transit. Okay, next we've got the clock. Um, it doesn't have any stopwatch function in this particular aircraft. It is literally just used as a clock, and it is accurate. Next, we've got the radio altimeter from zero all the way up to 1,500 meters. And we have the warning lamp here for when we go below the minimum altitude, which is uh, set by this triangle here, currently set at zero. Then we have a combined alpha and accelerometer gauge. So on this side, it is measuring our angle of attack, currently about two or three degrees. And on this side here is our accelerometer. So zero G there, one G, we're uh, under Earth's one G at the moment, and all the way up to nine G, at which point it becomes critical in the red. It goes down to minus 2g at which it becomes critical in the red as well and your engines will start to fail next why don't we look at uh, this chap which is our barometric altimeter we've got hundreds of meters around the outside all the way up to a uh, thousand meters and thousands of meters in the inside all the way up to twenty thousand meters here is our qfe currently set as 760. to indicate uh, indicate the lights here they work but i can't remember what they indicate Next, we've got our speedo, which this is uh, measured in indicated airspeed, kilometers per hour, up to 100, uh, 1,600 kilometers an hour, which is quite ambitious. Next, uh, why don't we jump up to the top? We've got our HUD here, our heads-up display. Shows all kinds of symbology and information to the pilot. I've got a full video on this that you can see in our flanker playlist, but just to show you that you can have several modes on it at the moment. One is navigation. Two is beyond visual range engagement. Three is vertical scan mode. Four is boresight scan mode. Five is helmet mounted display. Six is longitudinal aiming mode. Seven is ground attack mode. And eight, old style, old style Russian gun sight. And it's currently bugged and stuck in old sight, old uh, Russian gun sight. Weapons load selector here. Uh, we've got all of our, in fact, we have a look on the outside. We can see we've got all of our pylons here. These pylons are represented by these yellow lights. If the yellow light is on that pylon, that means that there is a weapon loaded on that pylon. If it's blank, there is no weapon on that pylon. If there is a green light on one of these, um, then that means that this particular pylon is selected and ready to fire. Let's try and do that quickly. So if I put it in air-to-air -air mode like that, just ignore the HUD, it's just bugged at the moment, uh, then we can see that we've got these four missiles selected and ready to fire. If I were to press the change weapon button, we would have these four selected, change weapon again, these two selected, and so on. Once I fire a missile, then that light will, the relevant light will be blanked out. Okay, let's head down. We've got here our ADI, our artificial horizon. This shows the aircraft's attitude, whether it's pitching up, whether it's pitching down, this many degrees. We've got our roll indicator, that's how many degrees we are rolling, and this here, this um, symbol here, represents our wings from the backside, from the rear, basically. 
We've got our direction indicator, our azimuth direction indicator here, elevation indicator here. We've also got guidance lines. Our localizer is this yellow line here, which gives us guidance information in the azimuth and this in the elevation here, known as our glide slope line. Um, I cover this properly in the navigation tutorial in this in the playlist, so I won't go over that now. HSI, main navigation, basic top-down view, compass rows around the outside, distance in kilometers here to next point of interest, or waypoint or whatever selected. Uh, course line selection here. Course line is this double white line here. Pointer to the navigation point of interest is a little green line in there. It's kind of hard to see. That will point towards your next selected waypoint or base or whatever you've got selected. Again, covered f fully in the navigation tutorial. Vertical speed indicator. If we are going below zero like that, then we are we are losing altitude at that many meters per second. And vice versa, if we are, if it's going above, we are rising by that many meters a second. Uh, we've got a yaw slip gauge here, and we've got a roll indicator here. Next, I'm trying to look behind here, we've got this gauge here, shows the position of our two intake ramps. So the front of our engine intakes, pause that again, the front of our two engine intakes, there are uh, supersonic preconditioning ramps, which change, change the airflow to subsonic before they enter the engines and they will be required once we are traveling supersonic um, and uh, so they'll the, for the left engine there for the right engine here and it's a pointer that will go up and down so you can use this to check whether your uh, intake ramps are not working correctly which is a common problem on this plane next tachometer speed of the engine in rpm two needles there one is for left engine one is for right engine and it's measured in tens of percent We've got an indicator light or and or warning lights here, but I don't they work, but I don't know what which ones are which. Afterburner lights are here, left and right will show green if the after, relevant afterburner is on. Core temperature, EGT gauges, left engine, right engine measured in one hundred of degrees centigrade. Uh, these indicators I think are for when the engines are starting and they will show green when the engines are starting. Next, uh, what have we got behind here? We've got our pressure gauges. Left wheel brake pressure gauge, right wheel brake pressure gauge. These are main system pressure gauges. I don't know what which ones because it doesn't say in the manual, but that's how much pressure we have in the three other hydraulic systems. Next, fuel gauge. So here is our main fuel band here, starting at 3,000 um, kilograms of fuel, going up to 9,000 kilograms of fuel. We're currently just under 5,000 kilograms of fuel. Here are warning lights for our particular tanks. Tanks one, two, three, and four. If they are empty, they will glow like that one. Bingo fuel here, light if you hit your being selected, bingo fuel. This uh, ladder gauge here is called a feeder tank. I can't work out what a feeder tank is. Oh, I see what it is. It's just the kind of lower height yeah it's just the lower half of this basically from 5000 downwards that's what this appears to be next our built-in test indicator when tests diagnostics are done on the systems it will display here next oxygen gauge um, i'm not sure whether it works or even what it says it what it reads it doesn't say in the manual but i'm guessing either pressure or flow rate of oxygen secondary indicator slash warning gauges here they work but i don't know which what every button does what every uh, light does Next, our RWR, warning, uh, radar warning receiver, displays to us hostile or friendly radar threats around the aircraft. Uh, to know more about that, I have a full video of that in the playlist. Next, our HDD, our heads down display. When we're in navigation mode like this, it will show us waypoints and such. When we are in, oh sorry, I'm not in navigation mode, let's try that again. When we're in navigation mode like this, then it will show waypoints, airfields, Stuff like that for navigation. Way, uh, I don't have any waypoints at the moment. If we go into combat mode like this, then it will show combat. There's no combat, there's no hostile aircraft at the moment, but that's what it's used for basically. Scale down here, uh, current uh, true, I think that will be speed there, kilometers per hour. And on the right here, we have our amount of uh, chaff shown on by these lights here. Um, I'm not sure how many chaffs per light. It's like 10 chaffs per light or something, or 16, something like that. But you can, I just use it as a kind of rough guess, uh, a, rough, a rough estimate. And flares is the amount of lights. So we're full of flares and we're full of chaffs. Okay, in front of the stick again. Kind of hard to see without moving the stick. See if I can, there we go. Neutral trim uh, indicator. So if your particular trim in either the axis roll, pitch, or your is in neutral position, then the relevant light will show.
Up here we have the weapons control panel. I believe there are some elements of it that are interactive. Let me just quickly cap off a few rounds with my gun. The, so you can see, although the uh, HUD is bugged at the moment, I'm, when I change the weapons, this shows the weapons that are selected. That means gun, that means missile, I think, and it will tell you rockets and bombs, but it's in Russian, so, uh, you know. Uh, so if I shoot some gun... This is our ammo counter here. It's currently telling us that we have three quarters of ammo, and that will go down accordingly. One half of ammo, one third of ammo, and so on. Um, I haven't managed to get rest the rest of the controls to work, so as far as I'm aware, they are not interactive. Uh, we have a magnetic strip compass at the top here. That is all I can think of doing. My apologies if I've missed every missed anything, but I think that's comprehensive. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.